Hi guys, so I... Okay, I'm going to stay here. I have a tendency to walk around the stage and I realized that um, none of you can see me when I walk around all the way. So let's remain here. My name is Miriam and today we're going to be talking about whatever happens when everything else has failed. When you've done your best but the website is still slow, what can you do? So my name is Miriam Gessier and as you can probably hear, I am a bit French quite a bit actually. I'm also half Hungarian, so this is pretty much a license to drink a lot and be very, very vocal about how angry I am. Thankfully, I'm hoping that we'll do this just fine and have a laugh together. So you can find me at, at Miriam Gessier on Twitter if you have a few questions. I have a tendency to answer quite fast. Um, unless it's somebody asking me to actually redo their entire marketing strategy in 140 characters. It's not happening. So let's get started. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I lied, really. Today is International Women's Rights Day, March 8th. Yay, I'm pretty excited about that. And the only thing I found a bit sad when I showed up here, I love the team from Vox Day Zurich and I feel so privileged to be here talking to people. But I noticed that there's only three of us ladies out of, you know, more than 30 speakers. So I'm not a data scientist, but that's, like closer to 8% than anything. And I know for a fact, because I have friends in Zurich, that it doesn't really represent the developer community here. So I wanted to take a few minutes and a few slides of your time to talk about this and not in the manner that you usually see, which is diversity, we should be better, society is failing. We already all know all this, like I get it. What I wanted to ask the public is, hey, next year? Or maybe, you know, in a week or a month, for your next meetup, how about you encourage some women to pitch? Why? Because most of us don't feel comfortable enough to pitch. We always think that somebody has a better idea or a better thing to say, which isn't true, but it's still in our heads. So if you could encourage a few ladies that you know, go for it, it'd be nice. And you can also mentor them and tell them, hey, I completely fucked up my first talk. Here's what you should avoid. That really helps too. It would have helped me, for example, if somebody had told me that um, PowerPoint has this weird mode where it will decide to push all the slides at once without giving you any control. So no matter what you say, the slides are going to go faster and faster and faster until you lose your mind and somebody in the room raises their hands and goes, well, you know, this is a developer conference and you should know technology a bit better. Um, which personally I thought was hilarious because PowerPoint as a technology for me is a concept. So, you know, I learned next time, Google Slides. My slides can be offline, my computer can die, I can steal someone else's computer, I'm still good. That's my stuff. You can also give visibility to your colleagues. Um, very often I see this um, when I go to work. Women will do something and it's great and everybody in the team knows that they've done it, but the boss never hears about it. So it kind of sucks. If you can take a few minutes to go, actually we did this together and it was pretty awesome, great. And the last point is, listen, I'm very bad at listening. I love talking, <laughs> but I still make an effort. Why? Because um, these past two days I was in Luxembourg giving a workshop and we got around to discussing, like a workshop on technical SEO. It had nothing to do with diversity. And we got to talking about the fact that sometimes I'll walk into a room and I have men walk out. I have men tell me that, hey, you're really, really funny, I like you in the office, but we're, you and I are not gonna be able to work together because like, y'all, I, 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 I can't. And then I'm confused, I'm like, you mean marketers? Because I get it, I mean, I also hate my own kind. And they go, no, 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 women. And I go, oh, this is gonna be bad. So I explained a few stories, you know, around the coffee machine to some of the people I was working with and they went, no, 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 this isn't true. And I went, please, trust me. Like, no, I, I can't think of that. So I turned around to another lady. I'm like, hey, let me stop you right here. Uh, do you have a few anecdotes, something that happened to you at work? And then the guy that was with me realized that actually <laughs> it's a real thing. It's a thing that happens. So that's, those are the few tips I can give you to celebrate this kind of day. But beyond that, if my clicker will work, I made an effort. It took me an entire 15 minutes to make this. Uh, five minutes to actually find all the images and 15 minutes, the rest of the 15 minutes, so 10 minutes, to figure out these wonderful effects. Let's enjoy them together. 
Ooh, crazy. Not really, but that's as far as I go in terms of design. You see a few ladies on the screen. I just pick them, not randomly, but they're people that I deeply respect and that I would be excited to see at Vox Days. So you have Marissa, who's amazing, and she's in Dublin, so it's not really that far. I mean, Vox Days came to get me from Canada, so I'm thinking Dublin is pretty good. You have Pauline, who's in Amsterdam. I'm sure she can bring you amazing gifts from there if you negotiate with her. And she also has very, very good opinions. As you can see, her Twitter bio is what convinced me to get started talking to her. You have Stephanie. Stephanie is uh, very unusual in the sense that she's an amazing developer, but she also does LED designs. Yes, this is Stephanie's work. And if you want an umbrella, a dress, a plushie that happens to be LED equipped, she's the person you need to talk to. Or if you want her to do a talk about what she does as a side hustle, it's also great. You have Gabby, who's actually all the way in New Jersey, but she used to be in England. She does a lot of data engineering and Google just snapped her up to be developer's advocate. So I'm pretty sure Google will pay for a plane ticket. You have Katie that I also uh, met in Germany. She's somewhere in Manchester doing amazing things with a guitar and code. You have Simona that I actually haven't met, but um, we're secret Twitter pals and she gives great advice. You have Stephanie and she's not even a dev, but she used to be and she's an amazing UX designer. Actually, the talk that I'm doing, um, you can find a video of her doing a much, much less angry version of this. And it has much, much more scientific insights. So you can leave that room thinking, okay, I'm gonna be smart with Stephanie. Call her up, she'll be happy to come. You also have Gemma, and she's pretty kick-ass too. But you know what? Let's talk about Zurich. Zurich is not my hometown. I don't know Zurich very, very well. But I do know a few ladies that are in the front row, and if they want to show up after the talk or during the talk, they can do so. If not, just poke them. They're in the front row, you know where they are. And if not, you can go via Twitter and ask Madalena if she has opinions or if she can help you get started or get in touch with some wonderful developers who also happen to be diverse. And I asked her. I'm not just recommending something and then not doing it. So these are a few names that have popped up for Zurich. Wow. Oh, this one is a cheat. I added that one because she was supposed to be here today and she helps Vox Days quite a lot. If you want machine learning, she's your lady. Oh, and she disappeared and came back again. So we have quite a few names. Why am I doing this on Twitter? Well, because if these leaders don't want to use their first and last name publicly, I don't want to give their LinkedIn or their personal website. This is an easy way to reach them. And you can reach out to them. There's quite a few more that I would like to talk to you about, but I either haven't gotten their approval or they're only on LinkedIn or via email. So I want to respect their privacy. But if we've been able to put these slides together in you know, a few minutes, I'm pretty sure an email from you guys would only take a few seconds and then they'll know that you actually do want to have their opinion and have more visibility. But that's not our topic. So our topic is what do you do when everything else has been done and your website still feels slow? And when I say feels slow, I'm not saying that it's, you know, theoretically slow or you measured it and it's actually still okay. I mean, feels slow, you've gotten complaints or you know this and you're stuck. You're stuck because this is out of the realm of what you can operate on. So I have a few tips. All of them will be Depeche Mode songs because I don't know why, but these guys seems, seem to be perfect for performance. So it's a question of time. Yeah, but what kind of time? That's a bit of an issue. Mm. I do believe the clicker has died. Rest in peace. No, I do believe my computer has frozen. Oh, this is amazing. Okay. I should learn to deal with technology a bit better. I would like to let you know that we as humans have achieved something incredible. We have won the fight against goldfish. We beat them by an entire second. Yep. Our attention span is now one full second shorter 
on average than a goldfish. Do you realize what this means for you? It means that you're actually fighting a fight you almost can't win. We have zero patience. We can't even handle a website loading nowadays. So what do you do? Well, you consider what time really means since you can't impact my attention span that much. Time is an illusion. Hmm. Okay, so if Einstein said it, maybe it has some truth to it. Let's look into that. You have two types of times, and I know you know this because you've gone through school, you've gone through visiting grandma, you've gone through bureaucracy. You know that objective time, the time that's on your watch, is not necessarily the time that's in your head. Personally, if you let me get lost on YouTube, like the deep YouTube, the random YouTube, I can spend hours and it will feel like a blink. And then if you ask me to debug someone's code for SEO purposes, sometimes it's super fun and sometimes it's angular and it feels really bad for me. <laughs> so that's how your brain perceives time. It's a different notion. So I'm telling you that this is an illusion, but at the same time, we have an issue. Remember when currency, what you paid for, used to be money? Now time is the new currency. Attention is the new currency. I am not giving my time away for free. I have had to suffer through on Twitter multiple social media influencer platforms that have algorithms that detect people that are potentially great ambassadors for your brand new startup or brand. And the problem is that most of my friends are either developers or they're doing DevOps stuff or data engineering. So all the jokes that I make are A, super nerdy, and B, use all the proper keywords for me to be identified as an influencer for um, JavaScript frameworks and uh, DevOps and uh, data engineering. and I don't do any of that stuff. So I get random pitches via my direct messages from people that identified me, asking me to take time out of my day for free to do something. No, 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 no. I'm not giving you that currency away. So I asked to be unlisted eh, with a few angry threats because I do that well. And my time is now mine again. This year I decided that my time is so much more my time that I kicked out half of the blogs on my RSS feed reader. I decided to mute a few people because I don't want my time to leak away that much. So I don't think I'm the only one. And that's a problem because it doesn't matter how fast your website is. If it doesn't feel fast for the user, we leave. Not only are you making me waste my time, but you're making me waste my currency, my value. So that's why good design, and I'm not a designer by any means, I'm just a very angry user today, is about saving time. So yes, it's an illusion, and you're gonna try to catch it up. So I did this wonderful graph. As you can see, I, I said I wasn't a designer, but at least it's purple. This is how we perceive time as humans. So what does it mean? Well, within 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 seconds, that's where there's an optimal response. We understand that this feels natural. An immediate response within one to two seconds is the time we usually spend um, to respond with as humans. So let's say if I were to talk to you and you took a second to answer, I'd be fine. I mean, it's illustrated. Most of us scream, give me just a second. That's the point. And then the optimal user flow goes, you know, a bit beyond that time, all the way up to about five seconds, I think. It feels fine. I'm going through the flow. This is okay. I'm confident. And then at 10 seconds, you actually lost me. You completely lost me. Like that's the maximum attention span that you can get out of a user while you load your stuff. So this is problematic, especially if you work in the banking industry with legacy systems, where for me to apply for a credit card, I have to wait a good 28 seconds. And yes, I measured because it was on my cell phone and I was eating sushi, so I was sufficiently distracted to put up with it. I still didn't apply for the card, but you know, it was kind of a challenge. And I realized that, yeah, it really takes a meal for me to pay that much attention to you if you take that long. But there's also other issues that we can talk about in that this time perception. It's not only about perception for your loading time, but if you happen to be offline or if I happen to be at a train like last night with incredibly crappy service, my connection is going in and out. I saw a wonderful job. It was amazing. 
it was, I think, um, um, marketing manager for Unity in Montreal. Perfect. The problem is that it wasn't perfect for me. It was perfect for someone else that I wanted to send the job to. So I kept clicking and clicking and clicking and it's not loading and it's not showing me the loading bar and nothing is happening on LinkedIn. And then um, a full minute later, when I finally catch service again, it tells me, congratulations, you have applied for the job successfully. Oh, I think this is the first time I'm going to actually have to apologize to a recruiter and say, my bad, uh, my bad, crappy service happened and here we are today. But there's this other candidate you should talk to. So you don't want that happening to you either, do you? Let's see how we can fix that. So how do you improve the perception? Well, first of all, you can make it objectively faster. <laughs> make the darn thing load faster. And if you tell me you've tried everything, I'm not gonna go through the list of things that you should have done. I'm gonna trust you. I'm just going to say that as a marketer, I have three separate load time reports in my tools that can show me which pages are taking forever. I know user timings, I can see by page, I can see by conversion rate, I can see all of this. I can see where you are making me leak money. So don't think we're not informed, we're aware. We just don't know, we don't necessarily have the tools to ask you to debug specific things. Time indicators are a well, well-tested tradition of telling people, please, Hang on, it's happening. And as you can tell, if most of you have dealt with Microsoft computers in the past, we are incredibly patient in front of that blue screen that tells you, hey, oh, oh my. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Well, let me get back. So when it tells you, you know, hey, it, please don't turn off your computer. That's the first thing I want to do, first of all. And second, I actually don't trust you, Microsoft, because your time indicators suck. I know you lie. This is bad. This is bad because, A, I'm not distracted enough. And as you can tell, my personal distractions happen to be sushi. That works well. I don't know what yours are, but they should figure it out. And the second point is, if you're going to lie and tell me what wait time, there's no wait time, which is a great way to handle it, you better be make me believe your lie. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Keep me distracted. Mm. So what is this thing? This thing is not necessarily a brand new tool, but a relatively new tool. I think yeah, it's a few weeks old. Google decided to show you, literally, that there's a link in my slides. You'll be able to use this tool if you have an e-commerce website. You can literally put in your domain. I tested it. Your current speed, I lied. Your current monthly visitors, average, I also lied. And your average order value, your conversion rate. And then you can play around with the number of seconds, minimum speed, current speed and see how much money you're leaving on the table by being slow. And what I mean by being slow is this tool is really, really, really concrete. It measures load times in, in terms of objective time. But my firm belief is that if you can make me wait in an enjoyable manner, you're still going to get that money. So second tip, World in my eyes, still a Depeche Mode song. I'm telling you, these guys have an entire discography for UX. Things that impact our time perception are easy to um, separate. The first thing is the task type. How hard is it? Okay, so let's take an example. How hard is the task of reading a 3,000 word blog post? Um, hypothetically, it's not if I give you my full attention. If I have a small child clinging to my leg while my chicken is burning and my husband is looking for his pants, maybe that task is going to be incredibly hard for me. And I'm going to know this and I'm going to say, I'm going to do this later. Later meaning never. I mean, I never did apply for that credit card because when I called to get a human on the phone, it took me 22 minutes in t instead of 28 seconds. But still. Then we move on to our prior experience. Do I know this? Do I have an easy way to estimate what this will entail, how long it will take, how good it will be? For example, there is a marketer that um, publishes a lot of long blog posts. And how hard is the task? I know it's going to take me forever to read this thing. But also it's very hard because he keeps having pop-ups everywhere and hello bars and promotions and I can't handle it. So my prior experience is, do I know this? Oh yeah, I know, it's gonna be annoying. And then my current state of mind. Am I happy? Personally, I, 
I do get angry, but I get hangrier. So it's this thing where you're hungry and you're angry at the same time, hence sushi again. So my state of mind will impact the load time perception that I have. So th this kind of sucks for you because from a technical standpoint, you've done everything right and I'm still complaining. You can't win. So what can we do? Well, you can start by creating a memorable user experience. Okay, great. So how do we get started? What you see here was very difficult for me to capture in full movement. It's actually an animated GIF of a, I do believe it's the tiniest, cutest little lemur I've ever seen taking pictures, giving a side eye. Okay, so I'm mesmerized. I keep watching this. And if you do check out the website, it's called Gratisography, and this is where most of my pictures are coming from. They are free to use, so this is pretty great. And they do this thing because it's an entire website of images loading, so basically a developer's nightmare. They have these little lemurs, and I'm excited to see them every time, even though I'm looking for the pictures. Huh? I, I have to keep reminding myself that. And this is what it's all about. Create a memorable experience for your user. So what does this entail for you as a team? Well, you could get sassy. What is your brand about? What is your company about? How about you have fun with your users? How about you go a bit out of the norm? Remember how we tried to make 404 pages kind of fun? Do the same thing. The lemur is perfect for me, but if you're a bit more corporate, I know that there's a few examples of corporations doing that very well. If they're tied to the airs, for example, a bird moving is kind of fun. It's distracting and it's not the same type of sad bar or blue screen that Microsoft gives. But what else can you do? Well, first things first, in case of a doubt, you always have Martin Split, the person who introduced me. And I like to stuff him in every single one of my presentations because it's the perfect stock photography. I mean, it fits perfect. You can start by moving it. Transitions and animations can help greatly. You know why? Because if I feel passive and stuck in front of a screen, I am going to get angry and my perceived time is going to be much harder. So if you animate things, I'm no longer passive, I'm engaged. That works. Keep it smooth, okay? Use your browser, browser to animate things in a fluid manner. Because if it's not fluid, then you're shooting yourself in the second foot. Why? Because I'm watching your animation not work well, so then your load time distraction is having a load time issue. We can't win. And the last thing is, simplicity is key. So. Keep it simple, this is not Disneyland. I'm telling you about all these fun little lemurs and all the things that you can do, I agree. But I have also had clients who are in insurance and send me, and this is true, the Disney World website and tell me, I wanna do something like this. It's not your place. You can be a little sassy, you can't be Disney. Because if you're Disney, I'm not trusting you to take care of my health or my house. I'm trusting you to entertain my kids for a day. The other thing is, ask yourself one very, very, very important question. Should you make the user wait or should you reassure them that things are going well? If I am buying a thousand dollar plane ticket, take your time, like don't double charge me. I'm fine, I'll wait. Just let me know it's going well. Let me know I'm not gonna have a timeout. So it really depends, load time depends. Some users in some cases are willing to wait because it reassures them. We know certain processes do take time, okay? So my patience towards my bank, for example, is going to be a bit greater than my patience for when Twitter doesn't load stuff. It's a bit different, ask yourself that. You don't need to be an expert, you will quickly know depending on what your industry is. And then we have a frog relaxing in the bathtub. Why? Well, because A, it's available, and B, because speed is perceived as faster by relaxed users. Remember my metaphor of the kid stuck to my leg, the chicken burning, I have no kids, by the way, just cacti, huh? and the husband looking for his pants? I'm not relaxed. Things are not going well. Why isn't this loading? What's happening? Is the internet broken again? Oh no, it's the website. Oh, what am I gonna do? I'm sure you've done that before. And then somebody tells you, well, actually, it's already loaded. And you're like, huh, oh, okay, well, this one time it worked. So even if you've done your job well, and it actually did load, 
I still manage to be angry because I'm not relaxed. And um, unless you offer me psychotherapy or you're there calming me and soothing me, you can't have an impact on that. But you have to keep this in mind. Are you dealing with angry users? Because for example, if I'm trying to file my taxes like everybody else at that same moment and nothing works, of course I'm gonna be angry, but you know this, so you can plan for it. If you know that I'm relaxed, you know you have a few more liberties, but raise that up. Do ask people, okay, you want me to optimize your load time, but what's the state of mind of people using this? What can I do? Tip number, tr number three, lie to me. So this sounds a bit dis dishonest, but if you've objectively done your job correctly, or if you've done the jo your job to your best ability, because we all have to deal with someone else's code sometimes, or we all have to deal with a you know, multi-million dollar Akamai contract that undoes any other efforts you've made to optimize your performance, well, all you have left is lies, but they better be good. One of my favorite quotes in the world is, gone, is by Winston Churchill. Tact is the ability to tell someone to go to hell in such a way that they look forward to the trip. <laughs> Let's do this with performance. Let's do this with load times. Make it enjoyable. Make those 10 seconds that shouldn't be enjoyable. Well, please, not 10 seconds, but still. So, as you can tell, I'm not a designer. You can see the background on this, but Keep in mind that if you're going to use time indicators and loading bars, the more revolutions an activity indicator has, the faster loading time will feel. And I find this very interesting because, for example, this thing, I could watch it for hours. I can't help it. And I showed it to my husband. He's like, oh, I hate these things. They're disgusting. And then I realized he just hated the colors. But the revolutions were actually working. I'm like, I showed him. This versus another indicator. I'm like, which one is faster? He's like, well, the ugly one. I'm like, okay, good to know, thank you. It's still remaining here. But there's another thing. If you accelerate your progress bar at the end, it will give me a sense that things are loading faster. Like, I mean, the tractor is going faster, right? I mean, personally, I've been watching this at least 30 times. I'm like, go tractor, go, go, go. You can make it, it's getting faster. You're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. I'm watching it as well with you. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, we're almost done. We're almost, no, no. Like, I know the end, and every time I'm disappointed. Well, it's the same for you guys. When you're creating a loading bar, your process should speed up at the end. For me, it's a bit similar to something in medicine. Doctors know that patients have a tendency to remember the most painful times and then they hang on to that. So it kind of sucks because then they get afraid. And the whole operation could have been benign, but they remember that one high point. Same thing here. The high point is, I finally made it, Microsoft, and then I'm stuck at 92%. And it feels like I've been stuck at 92% for five years. This is problematic, so lie to me. Tell me it's going faster. Tell me I'm in the last line. This is gonna be awesome. I'm almost ready to have it. And please, don't leave me hanging. I'm not gonna make you watch this again, but um, if you want to, it's available in the slides. But there's another thing. Hey, we all lie. We all tell ourselves lies. You know why? Because it makes it easier. So if you look at things, on the left, gosh darn it, Facebook is not loading again. I don't know what these guys are doing. It's supposed to be easy. And on the right is, <sighs> why did I buy an Apple product again? They want me to upgrade my phone again and that's why they made it obsolete. No, actually it's the same situation. <laughs> it's just different perceptions. So do test that next time. Let's see if you can, you know, implicitly blame someone else. I'm not saying it's fair, but I'm saying it's going to work and it's going to keep the user trust. Tip number four, everything counts. Yeah, it's still a Depeche Mode. Uh, for some of you that don't know this band because either you were born in the 2000s or we have different musical tastes, um, it's pretty fun. Like, I dare you try your next talk to use one of their song titles as each of your tip titles. It works. It's pretty magic. So, 
you have to bring interactions into play. I keep talking about this, but I didn't really spell it out. If your users can interact with things that they can see while it's still loading, or even if it's loaded already, they will remember that your website is faster. Is it true? Well, objectively, no. And you know that. But you know, perception is perception. And that's what you're playing on at this point, because objective went out the window quite a few cycles ago. And this is one of my favorite interactions ever. So these are custom quotes for Slack's loading screen. You can actually determine these quotes. I mean, the Slack team has some pretty fun quotes by themselves. But as you can see, we have our own as well. So my friend Lawrence started doing this, and I decided this was going to be hilarious. And I realized that nobody noticed I put in my own because nobody complained yet. But my favorite one that harkens back to um, women's, um, women's Rights Day is the fourth one, the one that half of the room probably doesn't understand, and the other half, being French-Swiss, does. A woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle. It's got nothing to do with it. That's the main point. So if you want to have fun, and if you're giving your users the opportunity to have fun with your loading time, because you know things do have to load, like we can't buy bypass this, give them an opportunity to engage, to interact. And that will go a mile. Like, this makes a huge difference. Every time I open this specific Slack, I'm actually excited compared to the other ones that cause me anxiety. And then there's another point. I know all of you have played this game, right? Did someone never ever click on this? <gasps> oh my god, three of you, okay. A, I want your internet provider, and B, you need to get a sense of whimsy. That space bar is begging for you to click it. And you will see, you will waste a lot of time until the internet comes back. Why? Well, because Chrome decided, oh, maybe you're not using Chrome. That's also another possibility. In that way, I'm not going to force you to use it. But you can play this game while you're offline and you're distracted. And it's great because sometimes you're in between two buses in e somewhere in Eastern Asia and that's all you've got. Everything else is either moist or completely wet, and you're still waiting for your bus. So this can be a lifesaver, and this buys a lot of goodwill. Your users will be happy to use your product. So this brings me to something else. I do not know what transportation really feels like day to day here, but let me give you a bit of an idea in my town. Um, I think about two years ago, they decided to implement some network in the metro. Sadly, not my side of town. So for the last four stops until my house, and I do live in the center of town, huh? I'm not like off into the boonies. So this gives you an idea of what I'm dealing with. I don't catch anything. I started loading stuff and I'm stuck by myself at best. At worst, I'm stuck with someone staring at me and asking me, if I dyed my hair color to cosplay something that I have never heard about. So this makes for a very uncomfortable time. So if you think of your users and your load times beyond load times, just simply load times, but if your user is stuck offline, hi, we're having fun if you want to join. No? Oh. Okay, so this is a link to resources that you can use. It's a wonderful GitHub that has a Bible of things you can do to make it easier for things to load offline. Why? Because I don't care if I'm offline. Half of the time, I haven't even noticed I've gone past that stop. You know, the point of no return in terms of network. And somehow, it's not your fault, but it is because I perceive it to be, because I want it to be, because I am stuck. So if you make things a bit easier for me offline, or if you preload a few things, it makes a world of difference. And if you want to know how much of a world of difference it makes for me, it's about $15. Why? Well, I didn't get Spotify, I got Google Music. Not that I'm sold to Google. It's just that Spotify has a tendency to cache roughly one and a half songs at best. Google will cache a lot more. So when I'm stuck in that metro, I at least have music. I'm paying for that. 
Thank you for thinking about it. Hi, we're also having fun. Join us, please. So we're talking about how you can make people feel much better when they're offline. And we're going to move on. And um, I know you're expecting a few more tips, but there's just one slight thing I have to show you before. And I'm hoping that it works. OK, hold on, hold on, hold on. No. Oh, oh, for those of you that didn't see it. OK, OK, get ready. I'm so crappy at games. OK, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> I warned you, but we agree. This was fun. So, hold on. Like, I'm really hoping that this works. Um, OK. Remember how I was talking to you about offline? Ta-da! This was not planned. Huh. OK. Wait. Am I good? Huh. I like their little loading thing. OK. No? Wait. Yes. Do I have any sound? Oh. <laughs> There's an amazing sound effect, and I'm so glad that it's done locally. <laughs> but, oh yes, offline first. <laughs> Shh, sing, sing. So the reality is you have to know your public because plot twist, this wasn't the Star Wars intro you expected, truly. I mean, I'm liking the music and there's no Star Wars. But it's a great book. I absolutely love it. The thing about this is you have the ability to make people wait for things. It's okay. There's no shame in that. You just have to know your audience. And I clearly knew no my audience because someone was able to do the soundtrack. <laughs> I showed this to someone else, and they looked at me and went, this is so boring and slow. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I actually use this service when I want to apologize to a developer. I go into Slack, I just paste this thing, and since they see GitHub, they're like, okay, this is going to be okay. And then they open it, and they're thrilled, because they're like, oh, you apologized to me for messing up my code, and it's awesome. Yeah, well, you have to know your audience. It doesn't cost you anything to be a bit creative. And one more tip, never let me down again. Still a song, still so very true. 78% of customers feel negative emotions as a result of slow and unreliable websites. And it's to the point where um, I agree with someone that told me only 78%. <laughs> it's true. That's true. There's websites I will not shop on because the experience is so insanely slow. I mean, it's so slow that I'm not even adding things in the cart. I'm hoping to see what you sell, okay? Or, or you could be a government website and I'm just hoping I end up on the right PDF, but I don't even know what it is because you're forcing me to download it for two hours. I don't know why. So be very, very careful. The way you work impacts people's moods. It really does. I mean, now I'm filled with anxiety because I'm really, really hoping that recruiter doesn't call me back. And I'm not the only one, except that um, some people are a bit more vocal. So what I find amazing, if you look on the top, Facebook, slow to load. That's a query I typed in because I'm the type of person who loves Google autocomplete. Like my favorite thing is, why do goats? Leave it at that and have hours of fun watching the replies and the autocomplete. But Facebook is slow to load and you can see that people are are trying to debug their own problems. Like, Facebook is slow to load on iPhone. Oh, oh no, wait, 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 it's not, no, no, it's not Facebook, it's just the comments. Can you please give me a fix for the comments? Actually, no, it's just my iPad. No, it's Firefox, it's images, it's Chrome, it's photos. People genuinely wanna fix this stuff instead of you. Like, they don't wanna wait, they want a quick fix. And then if you look at the bottom, it says load times, and then I was wondering, Who's the angriest about load times? And I found my answer. <laughs> it's video game players. 
I mean, I really, really enjoy the fact that um, the first one for World of Warcraft, they managed to stay polite. I don't know if it's because they're automatically censored or if they made an effort, but it's kind of amazing. Like, I never seen crap written this way. C star star P. Okay. Um, and they are very, very, very angry. I mean, you've got to be kidding me with the load times. Page two. Like, there's a second page to this. And Google determined that it was actually the best one out of the bunch. I'm pretty sure there were more. So, uh, also, it's like blaming Chevy for making a truck that doesn't fit. If somebody understands the context of that, please let me know. So, you have to keep in mind, you really, really impact users' emotions. So, if you play so much on their emotions, play on them positively with the tips we've been given. You really can make a difference. Be creative, think outside the box, as they say, although I hate that, that entire concept. Stay true to your company. Straight, stay true to what you're doing, your product, and users will be on board with you. You can also load dummy content. So if users are able to interact with your website, they they are much happier because they come to expect immediate responses to their actions. Remember my clicking four or five times on LinkedIn? I was expecting a feedback and I got none until they told me congratulations. And that was not the feedback I wanted. So you have about 0.1 second. Remember my beautiful purple and pink graph? You have 0.1 second to make that happen. That's almost magic, but you're not magic. So let's, so let's stay pragmatic. What can you do? One of the best examples for me is Pinterest, because they kind of went the extra mile with the dummy content. As you can see, the dummy content, the colors are kind of close, but that's their thing. I mean, this is a company that is able to really understand what images are about. At least they're very advanced with Google Lens as well. Like those are the two ones that I saw be quite good at this. So they're matching the colors. So as a user, I'm interacting with the content and I'm already wondering, hey, that light blue, what is it gonna be? Oh, it's a beach. Actually, that kind of makes sense. Oh wait, this is a beautiful beach. Maybe it's time to go on vacation. When is summer again? I don't have to wait for summer. It's cold enough, I can go. See, my mind went on a trip already. So this is something that you can quickly do. Or you can go the lemur route. That's also another option. And then there is one last thing that I wanna talk about and I'm not even going to give you a fix. I'm sorry because I think that if it has its own Wikipedia page, it should be fixed by the community. Have you ever heard of Fault? No? I know you've lived it. When you load something, it's a flash on, of unstyled content. And the problem with that is, I know you're trying to load the website. Objectively, like I'm a rational human being, I know the content is being loaded. I see something shows up, but it either looks like Notepad had improper relations with my browser, or it looks like you've been hacked in my mind. I don't trust you. I mean, this content is crap. It doesn't look anything like the experience I'm used to. So I'm kind of freaked out for half a second. And if I'm freaked out, my default is anger or anxiety. And then the website loads. But I can't quite dissipate the emotion you've instilled in me. So. This sucks. This really sucks as a user. And I'm not going to vocalize this because most users, well, they're not devs. They're not gonna go, hey, that's unstyled content that I'm seeing, like that text sucks. That guy should have done blah, 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 or that girl should have done blah, 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 blah. And even as a user, if I understand, I end up calling customer support because I really wanna help out. I mean, I've ended up in situations where I will tell someone, hey, do you know how databases work? Like you can merge them, but you can't add them both and you, you just kicked me out of my own account because you did a merge. And they're like, ma'am, uh, no, you don't understand how this works. I'm like, oh no, no, I do, I really do. And you should improve your user experience. So even if I call with that knowledge, it's never gonna reach you guys. So it sucks. So, what can you do to fix this? Well, it depends on your situation. It depends on, let's say, the CMS type that you use. It depends on the fonts that you use, if they're custom or not. Just, you know what? Look into it, please. And that brings me to the end. I just wanted to say 
Thank you first for the two ladies, or actually 20 ladies that I listed. Thank you for the three ladies I have in front that supported me today, and Martin that introduced me. And if you want Google Slides because you're lazy and want to work offline, they're here. And if you want those insane photographs, they're available at Gratisography, and you can check out the lemur. Thank you very much for your time.